What's up guys, it's Chuck from Brady Adventures and today we're gonna install our ARB Deluxe Bull Bar on the front of the Land Cruiser. In case you're wondering, an ARB bumper is about a three pound bacon job. We ran into a handful of problems along the way, getting things fitted. In the end, this thing is perfect and it mounted up just right. Just took us a while to do it. You'll see all those things in the video. If you have any questions on any of that stuff, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoy the video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. Enjoy. We need a shed and we do together. First, we removed the grill by taking out a few screws and then the front bumper with just a few bolts on the bottom and a couple screws hiding up in the wheel wells. And don't forget to unplug those fog lights. Then the bumper will just lift right out. Then we took off the cross member for the bumper with just a handful of bolts. Look, there's two more. And the cross member lifts right out. Cool. Next, we had to remove the toe points. These bolts were a little tight and required a pretty big breaker to get them loose. If you're not aware, to mount one of these ARB bumpers, you have to cut the original bumper's mounting tabs to be able to slide the ARB mounts onto the frame rails. All right guys, getting ready to cut this thing. I took my T-square into here and measured and marked a line and I'm gonna try to stay under that. Try not to hit anything down here. This is the only thing that really bothers me about the ARB bumper install is once you do this, there's no going back unless you want to come back and weld these back on again. I've got my brand new $19 hyper tough angle grinder, so I'm hoping it lasts long enough to cut through all of this. Definitely wearing eye, ear, and wearing my gloves here. So I cut these pieces. I cut them right off the bottom here. With my saw, that's where all the sparks were flying. I taped off the fenders and around the headlights to make sure I didn't scratch anything up during the installation and decided to go ahead and paint the grill's cross member since it was a little corroded. And then I painted this so this is all painted so that there wouldn't be any uh, places where it was going to rust. Next we removed the turn signals. Just kind of get under the light here and just kind of popped it off pretty easily. So it's all nice and ready to go now. And now we need to fit the chassis brackets to the vehicle and secure as follows. The one cool thing about these is they only go on one way. So watch out for the wires and stuff. And then kind of slide it on like that. Nice. On the right hand side of the vehicle, refit tie down and bracket, tow hook, original 14 millimeter long bolts and washers. Just to get, a, yep, get it on them threads. Finger tighten only. All right, now back it up in there. Can you see those holes? Yeah. Grab this bolt with your fingers. You know which way to turn it, right? This way. Clockwise, like you're going around the clock, yep. You probably should have glasses on, so if crap falls in your face. <laughs> All right, now you're good. How about the back one? Can you get that one tighter? Now remember, you don't want it tight, you just want to get it up kind of if you feel it to get really firm, then just stop. Careful, don't drop the wrench on your face. I'm just gonna get them started a little bit for you. I think I'm gonna help you a lot more on my videos. You know why it's especially fun? Next time you look at this bumper, you're gonna say, Yes, I did added some of this. Exactly. No, I know how to do that. I know how to put a bumper on. We screwed up one more time. On the left hand side of the vehicle, which is the driver's side over here, they supplied us new bolts with lock washers. We're gonna take these bolts back out and put these in. In the instructions, it said left to right, so we thought it meant swap from driver's side to passenger side, but it really meant just turn these things around. The recovery point actually can't be on the outside like it used to be because it won't fit in this bracket. You just flip them around and on each side there's actually this little cut out where you can get a hook in there. The way this is set up, really not ideal. You want to have the recovery points on your frame anyway, but this is just not 
gonna work right. What I'm probably gonna end up doing is building a spacer and getting some trail tailor recovery points, which if you have a spacer that's about this thick and you get some longer bolts, mount that on top, you'll have your recovery point all the way down here. Now what we gotta do is to drill a 13 millimeter hole. I think the big thing for this is we wanna go straight and level. Ooh, man, that is slow going in there. I can Did it come see through? It. I can see it. It came through, but it's not lined up the way I was hoping. A little bit off, but since it's a 10 millimeter bolt, a 13 millimeter hole, it goes in, but it is tight. Not a whole lot of wiggle room there. All right, this side, I have this line here. It's awful close. Now I'm really concerned by this drill. I'm just gonna a little pressure in there. That's what you get when you use cheap Chinese tools. Okay, so these are the crush washers. These have to go through as well. Hopefully that's gonna fit. It's got a little wiggle, but not very much because that, that hole was so tight, depending on how well this goes. May have to adjust that. It says 860 millimeters, and I think that from from the outside of this to the outside of this, 34 and one, two, three eighths. Way too much. This doesn't even make sense. These are the 30 millimeter bolts and washers. I'm gonna get these started. One because of the angle of the hole that I drilled, it really can only move up and down a little bit. Not really left and right. So this one has a lot more play. When I push it up against the frame and pull it over as far as I can, then these guys are exactly where they need to be. The outside of the bumper itself, which is going to fit right inside of here, 33 and 11 sixteenths. I'm at 33 and 11 sixteenths right there. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and get these tightened up. Okay, I could not successfully find any torque specs for this stuff except this bolt that goes right in here. Okay, so I'm doing these guys on the inside at 43. When all the bolts are fitted, the width of the chassis bracket and bolting surface should be 860. 33.875 inches to millimeters. 33.875 inches equals 860.425 millimeters. So one of the funny things is these rubber bumpers on the front of the vehicle and the instructions they just appear you do the splash pan and then all of a sudden the rubber bumpers are on there one guy online said it's way easier to do it when it's off the vehicle so i'm going to slide the bump around here put those rubber bumpers on got these 10 millimeter nuts and i'm going to use some loctite I, I like hit a funny bone or something here we go pain in the butt These guys go down here on the bar because that's, I think, where the splash pan is going to mount. Measuring correct, tighten all bolts securely. Fit 10 millimeter cage bolt. Four main bolts on each side of the bumper that hold it to the brackets. The two of those are bolts going through the cage nuts. Initially, you're going to tighten those just to get the bumper in the position that you want. And then once you have it exactly where you want it on both sides, then you'll drill two holes on each side. And those are called the pinning holes. And you also have bolts through those holes. One there, one right there, right here, and right down there. Let's just make sure it's gonna fit easy. Okay, up. Uh, let's watch the body panel. Gonna kind of angle it up the body panel. Make sure you're under the body panel on the side. I'm trying to look at everything. You need to leave a gap in here. Yep. Which they say about finger width. And where? Which part? From fender, where all this paint tape is. Yeah. Uh, okay, I see. You're like way low over there, right? Yeah. Secure two cage nuts using 10 millimeter by 30 millimeter bolts. Large HD washers and spring washers. So what we're gonna do 
is each of those cage nuts that are down there. I'm gonna put this lock washer and then this big washer and we're gonna get them just started and then that'll show us what kind of adjustment we have. Those bolts that we just put in have it all sort of positioned just about right and we can just kind of tilt it a little. We wanna get it about the same width. Some people don't like a lot of gap here. If you're twisting on a, off a road or something, your frame and bumper can flex up into the body and you don't want to have that happen. The space between either side is no. very uneven. Yeah, I know, but it's because we're not pushing this one right now, right? Mm -hmm. it's like, even when you push it, it works. <laughs> now over here. Over here, it's like close to. Yeah, but we can pull that back out. Drill a hole through here. And it has to go through that other side, huh? Yeah, and it's like, I don't have a lot of... See how, how far out it is? Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to get everything lined up and I realized this pinning hole is way, way out um, and that's not going to come up tight. So I need to loosen this bracket again and hopefully get that lined up. But if you remember, this bracket didn't have a whole lot of wiggle room so I might need to hone out that hole that was a little off. I have got the bumper on here and in pretty good shape of course I have the lights left to do also the pinning holes the problem that I ran into really is these pinning holes on the bottom on this side this was way too far out and I wasn't gonna be able to get a hole without clipping the edge and over there on the other side it was had plenty of room so I knew something was wrong I loosened up all the bolts and really the way the buffers mount onto the frame there's very little that you can do when it's all tightened down but what I realized is a lot of the problem was with this bolt right here. I used a standard drill bit that was a little bit smaller than 13 millimeters and it didn't give me enough wiggle room. And I had to hone this out to get things to line up. And then after I did that, I got these holes almost in the identical position, made sure everything was lined up around here, the same. I wanted to let you know, I stacked some washers to help me with the gap. I kind of had these stacked along the way. ARB says 15 millimeters or more. This stack is a little more than 13 millimeters. And I got right to 13 millimeters here and probably a little closer to 15 out here. I think if I would have actually used a 13 millimeter drill bit to begin with, um, I would have had just a tiny bit more adjustment. I would try to get 15 if I could, just cause that's what ARB recommends. But I saw someone that said they had 10 and they only hit their fender one time when they were bouncing off some rocks. I don't know, we'll see. It should be good. If not, I'll let you know when I screw up my fender. So I gotta tighten these until these nuts start to deform a little. I drill those pinning holes and lock it up nice and tight. I'm ready to drill the pinning holes here and here. So you can see how close that is. I really don't like that, but that's what I got. Now it's time to tighten everything up. I was still a little concerned that those bottom two pinning holes were a little close to the edge of the metal. I actually contacted ARB and had a really great conversation with them. They completely reassured me that wasn't a problem. And the pinning holes primary purpose is just to hold that bumper in the exact position that you want it in. What it says you need to do for the light, first thing you gotta do is unscrew these screws and we're not gonna use them. Probably depends on the car that you're putting it on. So unscrew that. Oh, probably, you yeah, see that just come off. This is the bag of bolts that came for, for this deal. We got a bunch of rubber and plastic things that are for mounting this to the bumper. Now it's from the back, so it has like this nice round look. They go straight up and down, get over it. Easy. All right, good, nice job. So look, hold on, before you put that in, this wire is gonna clip in there, just like that, okay? And now this wire, hold that, 
going to go up into here and we're going to link it into the other turn signal. And while you do that, I'm going to attach this housing. Definitely have to put these little brackets on and mount the housing before you put the lights in. So it's a little plastic bracket and a rubber, rubber washer and this mounts into the housing. So you can see right here, here's one of them and there's one up here you can barely get to. So there's four of these, two on top and two on the bottom. And once you have that in, then you can mount your light in. And then your light's gonna go up right in here. Just like that. All right, and there she is all mounted up. We're gonna wire up the signals. It's the last thing that we need to do, right? Yeah. Who do we get this uh, wiring instructions from? The fuzz. The fuzz. The fuzz. fuzz. The fuzz on I Hate Mud. So I'm gonna just really carefully split this tape right here. Some access to these wires. According to fuzz, which I think he's right, the green and black is the flasher. The green is the parking lamp and the black white is the ground. Black to black white, green is gonna go to green black. Oh, green black right yep. green goes to green. Yep, so I'm gonna cut this right in the middle so that I have the most room to work these wires. The kit came with these little splice connectors. You would put the existing wire through there, key, cuts through the wire just enough to make contact and then you have your new wire in here. It's sort of a convenient way to do things but I don't think it would hold up. Wrap that around real loose and I'm gonna see if I turn my signal on. Will it work? It's working. That one's working but that one's not. Oh you know why? Because I don't have a ground. We're gonna use some of this shrink wrap tube. Pretty good. And I'm gonna slide that up over there. When I do all three, I'll hit it with the blow torch. The fuzz on I Hate Mud ran a separate ground, so that way, if one ground went bad, you would still have a signal light, one of the two. And that's actually not a bad idea, but I decided not to do that. We use crimp connectors, solder, and shrink wrap for the signal light wiring. I think a better solution for that would be to use some of the Bosch connectors that you can get on Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description to those below. Before we close it all up, we want to test it out. Yeah, go ahead, hop up in there. Let's take a look. All right, it's working. Now I'm gonna plug this in, make sure this is working too, because they both need to work. Both working. Oh, it's working. Brady Adventures, signature fashion. Blow torch. We're gonna use the blow torch. Put on your glasses. Probably not the best idea. Probably not the best idea. This is the plug that goes to the fog light. Just run a little tape around this. Seal it up at least a little bit. Got finished a little bit late last night, so decided to leave the final piece, the splash pan rock guard thing. We got right here to this morning. I'm gonna slap that in and then we'll be all done. This requires 10 millimeter for the front four bolts. Just like those larger bolts that hold the bumper, we have some nuts in here. And there's four of those. And in the back, I've got my diff drop, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get this in with the pan and the bolt through, which might be a bit of a challenge. And my thought was, I could just kind of set these on there and get it up in position and then wiggle the bolts through. I think the ones on the side will be easy to get out. It's really the middle one that's gonna be the hardest because I don't think I can get my fingers in there very good. I'm definitely making this look easier than it was. I think this was attempt number five. Spacer in without losing it.
And after all of that, I have a handful of nuts and bolts. I've got these uh, wires. These have got to be for hooking up your winch, but I didn't even go through those instructions. I think this is a bracket for the control unit. All of this stuff, I'm just gonna throw in this bag and, and keep it for the day when I decide to throw a winch in there. This took a lot longer than I thought. Most people say this is like a two or three hour job, and I, I think that's probably true. Most little things have gone really quickly except for just getting it adjusted. So I think if you had the holes right and everything came together nicely, that would be a quick job. Other thing is every time I drilled any metal, I painted. So that took a lot of extra time to just to, to stop and paint and let it dry enough to, to keep on moving. There it is, the final product. You can see the amount of gap I've got right there is uh, pretty consistent. Guys, I can't thank you enough for watching this video. If you have any additional questions about our bumper and the installation or how we're liking it now, please leave those in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and thanks very, very much for watching.